Hello everyone, welcome back to The Kitchen Table. Today on The Kitchen Table, just a brief um, video following uh, the news about the Lily drone. Uh, and also just some sort of general words about Kickstarter in general based on my personal experience with, with Kickstarters. And uh, yeah, before we go any further though, the sun is well past the yard arm here. So we're on to the, uh, the red wine. We have um, a Cabernet Sauvignon from Australia to the, the boundaries from Langhorn Creek, uh, 2013 vintage, very nice indeed. So um, if you're joining me, cheers. Mm. Jammy. Um, so yes, the news was announced um, a short while ago that the Lily drone has failed. Um, what's promising is that the company are saying that they aim to refund all their Kickstarter backers within the next few months, although I hope that's the case, although they've said that the reason why they can't take it to the next stage is because the money's run out and they haven't got the money now to, to push it forward into the manufacturing stages and the, uh, uh, you know, they can't get any more investment. So that begs the question of where the Kickstarter money is that they can give back and anyway never mind I hopefully that will be if you did back it then you know let's hope that that does work out for you um, those of you with very long memories may remember I'll put a link to it over there um, first talked about the the lily ages ago when it was announced and, and I had a couple of reservations not from a uh, the fact that it was Kickstarter point of view financially reservations I had reservations about some of the design aspects so the fact that to make it fully waterproof for example meant that the battery was sealed inside and the shell was had a waterproof seal which meant a couple of things one when your lipo started to degrade and you wanted to swap it out you'd have to send it back to the manufacturer or open it up yourself and lose the waterproofing I guess. Um, two, with that also, it's a sealed unit, so I had some concerns about heat and how that would escape. And the third major issue was, as a sealed unit, if I want to go out for a day on the mountains or kayaking, as they showed you in the video, well, once it's done its 20 minutes of flying, you can't just swap out another charged battery. You have to get yourself off the mountain and go and find yourself a mains outlet and plug it in, which kind of seemed to be a bit of a Achilles heel. Anyway, so they've announced that, that they can't actually take it into production. Um, they've run out of funds to be able to do that and couldn't find any more backing to do that, which is a shame. I think a lot of people were try, quite attracted to the concept. And of course, what's happened since they announced is that they've slightly been overtaken in the selfie drone market. People like Unique with the Breeze, um, to a certain extent, the Mavic from DJI, and, and generally speaking, other drones uh, putting in software into their existing units that mean you can track a person and, you know, you can tether yourself to the, uh, to, so it follows you. So it, it kind of, it, it had its day and it, and it technology-wise, it, it's been overtaken, so that's a shame. Um, so I also just wanted to talk about Kickstarter. I mean, I've backed eight or 10 Kickstarter projects over the years. None of them have been drone ones, interestingly. Um, and I have one that failed. Um, I just kind of want to reiterate to people that I think you really should think of Kickstarter as, as not as a pre-order site, no matter how glossy the, the production on the videos that they use to promote them are. And my goodness, some of them are amazing. They're like feature films. They must have spent thousands just on the video to get you to, to, to pledge money. Um, Kickstarter, you still, no matter how m mainstream it's becoming, it's still effectively a shop window for inventors and innovators, and it's a way of investing. You are not buying something on pre-order, and you should always be prepared for your money to disappear. It's why the most expensive thing I've ever backed on Kickstarter cost about $120 or something. Um, it's because at the time that was money that I was able to lose, but I thought the idea was cool, and, you know, uh, it's that sort of thing. So I think that's just something to be aware of, especially in the drone space and especially if it's a brand new company. Um, you know, having said that, Pebble Time, um, this isn't the original Pebble, which was a Kickstarter. This is the Pebble Time, the, the color version that was the, the next generation one, which was put on Kickstarter, but really they just used Kickstarter to say thank you because it was already in production. Uh, so it was pretty much, a, it was a pre-order in that, in that case. Um, uh, but for very cutting edge and new stuff, just please be careful with your Kickstarters, especially as well around the drone space, because there are so many hurdles to development. We all remember back when DJI weren't the best at quality control on their software. And we've had another, you know, we've had some other uh, unfortunate 
uh, drone projects that have not come to fruition. Just be aware that Kickstarter isn't a pre-order. It's effectively money that you can stand to lose. So if you order the Lily, let us know in the comments, what have you actually as a backer, what have you received? What notification have you had? Are they guaranteed you will get your money back? And you know, what are your thoughts on Kickstarter in general? I look forward to hearing from you uh, down below. Um, thank you very much indeed for watching and uh, we'll see you again soon back on the kitchen table. Until then, cheers.